So I really wanted to thank Safia first so that she reached out to me um, to do this talk. Uh, when she told me that she started a group uh, which is for women empowerment especially, I thought this would be the, a great opportunity to talk uh, to women from a woman about their health. So today's topic is um, called Nutritional Journey of a Woman's Body. I think women um, have been empowered from many different angles and I think health and nutrition should be one other place that we should start taking charge of. So um, I just want to remind you guys that you know we women uh, are we naturally have this tendency to serve others. You know, we always put someone else before ourselves. We've always done that throughout history. I think it's kind of an inbuilt thing in women, whether we are a daughter or a sister or a wife or a mother, we always try to cater to somebody else. We always try to look out for other people, try to serve them. Um, that gives us joy. And I think there's nothing to be uh, ashamed of or feel bad about because I think it is, there's a beauty in it. We should be proud that we are made to serve others, um, but we also can't neglect ourselves. You know, we, I know that mothers especially and I, uh, and you know, even wives and even daughters, you know, we always try to take care of our family, but we always put ourselves in the back burner, you know, we say, okay, let them eat what they want and I'll take the leftovers. That's sort of how we are built. And surprise, I don't know if it's a surprising thing or not, but our body does the same thing. Okay, our body, uh, like our mind and our emotions, we it also likes to nourish and nurture our families. Um, and we do that inside and out. You know, women, uh, we do it you know, whether we want it or not. And then we also do it because we willingly want to do it. Um, and our biology, our biological tendencies also to nourish our families. Um, but what happens when we don't nourish ourselves? You know, when we are taking care of others and we're doing everything we can, but we don't take care of ourselves, of ourselves what happens? I want you to put in the comments below what you think happens <laughs> um, before I go to my answer. So how should we nourish ourselves? You know, what do we do? What do we eat so that our bodies are good, well enough, healthy enough so that we can nurture our families? You know, the most common ways is to eat a balanced meal, you know, having all food groups for, for all the different food groups there are five different food groups that we need to eat from. And then you also want to get all the important nutrients like calcium and iron. A lot of women lack these nutri the, these minerals, calcium, iron, vitamin D, omega-3, and fiber. And I can, I'll can i try to touch a little bit of each. And of course, exercise. Exercise is very important. Something that we always neglect or something that we always put in the back burner because we are always thinking uh, about serving the next meal or helping, you know, doing something or the other. And obviously um, our uh, health and well-being is the last priority for ourselves. So I'm, I'm just gonna pick one out of the few things that I talked about, calcium. And I want to show you what's happening with the calcium in the body because I think this will give you a good example of how our body works and how we are made to nourish our uh, families, okay? So I'm just gonna pick calcium because I think calcium also is a very big deal for women. You know, we, we probably know at least, we probably know like many, many women in their elderly age who have joint pain, you know, who, you know, and they're, they're walking. It's hard for them to walk. Um, so I thought this would be a good topic uh, to start talking from because this affects everyone at every age. So where does calcium come from? Milk, milk, okra. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yes, actually, Aisha, you're right. Uh, it is not only in elderly, joint pain is also very common in anyone who is 30 plus. Yes, <laughs> it is pretty common nowadays. 
So you guys mentioned that a lot of you have um, great answers. Yes, it's dairy products or milk. Um, obviously, other foods have them and I'll g get to that. But yes, milk and dairy products are one of the main sources of calcium that our body gets. Now, how so keep, keeping that in mind, can you tell me how much did you have today? Did you even have one cup of milk or even half a cup of milk or even yogurt? Um, if yes, please put in the comments below. Um, for most people, I think uh, it is a very low amount of uh, of dairy products that we get in uh, one portion is good but we need a lot more than that to sustain now what are the functions of calcium calcium is not only necessary for strong bones and teeth which it is but there's so many other functions for which our body needs calcium especially uh, for muscles to move for muscles for your muscles to move for you to walk and talk you need calcium um, also to carry uh, messages from your brain to the nerves and from the nerves to the brain you, we need calcium if we don't have enough calcium in our body the our nervous system slows down um, we also need calcium to move blood from you know all over the body you know the heart for we need calcium for heart to pump as well. We also need uh, calcium to release hormones and release enzymes. All of these very, very important functions that our body needs to do with the help of calcium. And so basically, almost every single function in our body needs calcium, right? So that's why our body regulates calcium very, very tightly. Um, there our body tries to maintain homeostasis that means that everything should be in balance so that's why our calcium in the blood it cannot go higher or lower it always has to stay at the same level because if once um, if you don't have enough calcium in the blood all other functions stop so that's why our body completely maintains that calcium in your blood even when you're not eating or drinking enough calcium so um, even if you didn't have dairy today, um, your body is still going to try to maintain this calcium level in your blood no matter what, because it has to, it has to survive. So the way it does that is it'll take it from your bones, okay? Because you have to maintain a certain level of calcium in the blood. So even if you're not getting it from food, which I hope you're doing, but if you're not getting it from food, your body will take it out of its reserves, which is our bones and our teeth. So it'll take it out from there and put it in the blood to maintain that level. Now, unfortunately, there's no radar uh, that tells us that we are losing calcium from our bones because like I said, the level of calcium in the blood is always going to be the same. So even if you'd go do a blood test to see if you're, you know, if your calcium levels are good, it's always going to be good because like I said, it's going to take it from your bones. Um, you know how when you are, you have low sugar, you can test your blood sugar levels. When you're low in vitamin D, you can te get a blood test for vitamin D or, or cholesterol and it'll tell you. For calcium, there's no test. There's no test that you can tell if you are uh, low or high on calcium. So that's why uh, our uh, bones start losing calcium if you're, not con if you're not consuming calcium from other sources. And this is happening on an ongoing basis throughout your life, okay? Throughout your childhood, right now, even as we speak, even as you're sitting and listening to me, you might be losing some bone. Um, and you know, bone uh, growth is the most crucial during early growth, you know, when uh, children are going through puberty, that's the best time when you have the highest amount of calcium in your body and the highest need for calcium in the body because that's when your bones are growing and all of that. But this, if you think about it, our teenage years, if you go back to your own teenage years or your children's teenage years, do they care about getting more milk in their diet? I don't think so. I think it's one of those things that they cut out because of the acne and the smell or the taste or whatever it is. 
uh, a lot of us start from that early on to start stop drinking milk it just doesn't become a natural habit for us um, unless unless hopefully it is a habit but most people especially the girls who are trying to lose weight or prevent you know their skin from uh, being acne prone we start stop having dairy products um, now I wanted to ask you how many of you are mothers in this group so uh, all the mothers in this group I want you to go back to your pregnancy days um, just uh, want to say that our body like I said you know as our nature is we try to serve others and so does our body so our body is designed completely to serve our baby first so no matter what uh, we eat or drink if your baby needs it and if it can get from somewhere it is gonna get it right so same thing with calcium your baby obviously needs a lot a lot of calcium for its uh, for the growth of its bones um, teeth skin muscles blood all of that stuff and if you're not having a constant supply of calcium through food um, where do you think the calcium for the baby was coming from? It is usually coming from the blood and obviously your blood has to refill uh, the levels of calcium and it's going to take it out from bones. So, so technically to grow your baby you were giving up your bone so that your baby could uh, grow into a healthy infant. Um, so if you are not well nourished and this is also for mothers who have teenage girls or who have young girls who are one day going to be mothers this is also very important if you are not well nourished before conception and even during pregnancy all that nutrients are going to come out of your reserves okay so whether it's folate or calcium or iron all of this is going to come out from your body anyway whether you feed yourself or not that's why it's very important for women to take care of their bodies as early as possible because our body like i said is a reserve it is for somebody else it's also for you but it's also for somebody else so the the more nourished you are the more nourished a young bride is the better it is um, for herself and for her future so just imagine the condition of your bones by the time of delivery and most of you probably have more than one child so just imagine if you weren't well nourished back then and you weren't feeding you know you weren't getting proper nutrition uh, this is this has already uh, compromised your bone health okay going forward where do you think the calcium for the baby's milk comes from the milk has calcium where do you think it's coming from it's again coming probably out of your bone okay now you can already see where I'm going with this we have been losing bone throughout our life and we will continue to be losing that unfortunately but there are ways there are ways that we can fix this we do reach our peak bone mass around the age of 30 to 35 any point after that that we start losing calcium so if any of you have anyone in your family who is who hasn't reached 30 yet try to encourage them to build the most strong and most healthy bone that we can so after the age of 30 we lose about one percent of our bone every year and then during menopause in the first five years of menopause and like everybody every woman has a different um, time frame of when uh, menopause starts for them but the, from the onset and from five years after menopause you lose about two to three percent of bone every single year and then after the five years post menopause we start losing one percent uh, bone every year again so generally by the age 80 most women will have lost more than 53 percent of their of their bone mass of their bone mass which they had around the age of 30 okay and in contrast to that men lose only about 18 percent by the age of 80 so uh, that is a huge uh, difference and that's why women have to take care of their bone health as as much as they can so osteoporosis it's called a silent thief 
because it slowly steals your bone density over many many years without even giving you any signs or symptoms you don't even realize that you're losing all this mass because there's no radar unless you're so in tune with your body and you can tell that you're feeling weak or you're having some joint pain there's really no other indication um, that you're losing bone density unless you do a test so uh, osteoporosis affects one in four women over the age of 50 and i think in our culture if you're from the south asian culture i'm assuming more than one in two women are uh, probably suffering from that so what can we do how do we uh prevent losing any more bone mass um i say start as early as today there's no um no need to regret your past we still have a lot of time if you are below 30 you're very lucky um you can do as much as you can till you reach the age of 30 to build as much and as strong of a bone as and so our goal is to bring this build the strongest bone and the hardest bone possible right now but if you've crossed 30 don't worry you still have time like i said we lose about one percent bone every year we can slow the progression there are ways that we can do that okay so obviously step one in our process is increase calcium intake so calcium comes from many different foods but the best uh, oh before i get into that how much do you need so for women like we're talking to women right now so we need about 1200 milligrams of calcium in a day so that's close to about three servings of milk or dairy products in and that's for women for men uh, they can get away with two servings of dairy products but women need at least three servings of dairy products or 1200 milligrams um, now calcium is found in many food products especially dairy like milk yogurt and cheese for sure um, also dark green vegetables like broccoli kale spinach they also have a little bit of calcium it may not be as easily absorbed and as readily available for our body from the from the vegetables but it's still there it's still another source in addition to dairy products but i would say don't compromise on dairy products and then bony fish like sardines and salmon have also some calcium and then dried beans like chickpeas kidney beans um, soy beans all of those uh, legumes uh, have a lot of uh, healthy amounts of calcium but the best source is dairy products because the calcium from plant sources aren't as uh, easily absorbed in our body okay now let's look at uh, the sources of uh, calcium if you look at um, so if you're someone who doesn't drink dairy products like milk or yogurt and you rather go with you know soy milk or coconut milk or rice milk that's fine but make sure that it is fortified with calcium and that's important it will still not be high enough as uh, milk but it's still good enough if you look at uh, regular um, well this is chocolate milk but about 20 about 300 um, grams out of your 1200 milligrams and then goat milk has also 300 about 345 grams so about three servings of that um, should be good like you see here cash cashew milk also has about the same most of them have about the same coconut milk has a bit less okay um, and then cheese all kinds of cheese have a good amount of calcium in them as you can see um and yogurt also has a good amount of calcium as well so let's get into vegetables the collard greens this i think collard green would be um sag in our south asian culture spinach turnip greens uh kale it doesn't have as much as dairy products but it's still there and also if you can get calcium fortified orange juice that also might help Okay, and then f like I said fish so I'm just gonna skip this quickly how much is a serving so a single serving is about a cup of milk or a three-fourths cup of yogurt so if you look at the small tiny Activia 
cups you can actually have two of those and count them as one serving of your dairy products and you need about three so children um, between the ages two to eight need about two servings um, and then when there are preteens and teens they need three to four and that's because that's the time when the most bone is built so that's why between 9 and 18 if you have kids uh, in the age range of 9 and 18 make sure that they are getting at least three to four whether it's a boy or a girl they need about three to four servings of dairy products and it's a good idea to train them from that age to consume milk on a daily basis because then that it becomes a habit and then when they grow up they don't have to suffer and then women um in uh, b between 19 and 50 need two to three it doesn't say three here but it's still three and then obviously anyone above the age of 50 still also get, needs to get about three servings of dairy products okay so um what about supplements um, i'm assuming you have that question you're wondering about that supplements are okay you can take them but um, you don't want to get a thousand milligrams um, capsule. So most multivitamins will not have calcium added to them or they'll have very little because to add the amount of calcium that we need, the pill has to be really big. So uh, they usually don't add it to multivitamins. You have to take them separately. So if you do take uh, calcium supplements, you can go for the calcium citrate or the calcium carbonate. Um, those are most easily uh, bioavailable or absorbed in our body and don't exceed more than 500 to 600 milligrams at one time so um, and um, when you do take calcium carbonate you want to take it with meals if you are going to take the supplements so you can take two calcium supplements but I'd say try to get at least one of your servings of dairy products even if you are getting some calcium supplements Okay. Now, um, another bonus actually of drinking milk rather than just taking supplements is that there is research that shows that regular milk drinkers are slimmer than people who don't regularly drink milk. So not just for um, not just for bone prevention, but even weight loss and even preventing colon cancer. It is a good idea to make milk and yogurt and dairy products a regular part of your diet um, okay and for those who are skeptical about um, milk and uh, you know I know there's a lot of research out there that pre that talks about milk not being good or it's something that uh, we are the only cult um, this is one I heard very often that we are the only species who drinks milk after they grow up or who drink someone else's milk and you know all of that stuff but there is science behind getting more milk but I just wanted to touch on a little bit of you know the spiritual side of it you know if you uh, are Muslim uh, there is a lot of um, benefits to milk even in the Quran and even in the Hadith um, there is encouragement to have milk and I think um, in many other religions, I think even in Hinduism, uh, milk uh, from dairy products is encouraged. So I think there is a goodness in dairy products and it shouldn't be neglected. It's one of the most neglected food groups out of our foods. So trying to get more is, is a better idea uh, for overall health. Uh, but I also wanted to say, just because I told you you need to get three servings of dairy products in your day uh, or getting even your supplements isn't enough. Remember how I just mentioned that don't take, I'll just go back to this quick slide here. I said do not exceed 500 to 600 milligrams at one time of a supplement. And same thing with m dairy product. If you're going to have milk, have one serving of milk and then later on after a while have another serving the reason why that happens is our body if it doesn't feel the need to have or sorry um, if there's too much of a good thing your body doesn't absorb it which is strange but it's just 
uh, the way it is you know just because you eat more calcium doesn't automatically mean that now your bo- your body is going to go and take it up and your bones are going to absorb it you have to actually work for it you have to tell or make your body ask for more calcium it's a funny thing but just this is just something that we don't do uh, i think back before um in all in the past we used to be so active that we didn't need uh to have me come here and tell you that you know you need to move more but actually moving more helps increase your bone density so if you see on the top layer here this is where the bone starts building itself you know it's on the edges on the joints and that is where the um the the more pressure you put on these areas oops yeah on these areas the more bone will build and when the bone is ready to build itself it will ask for more calcium so when you are drinking the milk it will take it up and put it in the bone if you don't uh if you aren't physically active then that won't help so i'm just this picture is here just to compare a uh, bone density of an osteoporosis bone and someone who has a healthy bone and uh, if you look here that's the difference and for this to close the gaps you need to ask your body or you need to make your bones ask for calcium the way to do that is doing some weight bearing exercises even simply walking if you're not already doing this simply walking will help um put pressure on your joints and your joints will um and that pressure will encourage you to build more bone but obviously you need to get the calcium as well while you're uh in your throughout your day and if you're going to get three servings and spreading it out throughout the day at different times will help so sometimes if you're going to go walking try to maybe have a serving of yogurt or milk maybe half an hour after you walk or something like that uh, also running house because the more pressure you put the better it is and resistance exercises like weight but this one is very interesting and i think for many kids and young women like yourselves you can do this an activity where your feet actually leaves the ground and then hits the ground back and you're working against gravity that's a good place to be at to get your bones um to ask for more calcium and build itself again okay uh step number 3 it's not enough to just have calcium and uh walk more and you know do more weight bearing and jumping activities you actually need to get more vitamin d as well vitamin d is that it acts like a hormone which helps calcium be transferred into the bone and obviously there are other more other nu- nutrients and minerals as well but i think vitamin d i wanted to talk about that because we are living living in canada and we tend to not have enough cal- vitamin d and sunlight um so and many many people that i I've, i've been seeing recently have vitamin d deficiency there are many ways uh, that you can get vitamin d but not easily from foods uh foods have very little vitamin d there are some and i'll talk about that but then obviously uh sunshine is the best um for people who are brown skin we need a little bit more time in the sun than someone who was a caucasian or had white skin so uh, maybe 20 to 30 minutes in the sun without sunscreen yes <laughs> unfortunately um the best places that we can get vitamin d from is you know getting sun exposure through uh, on your arms and your face um those are or your legs as well uh but you need about 20 minutes in the sun uh if you are brown skin if you're lighter skin you can do away with less time uh but the darker our skin the longer we have to spend to get that vitamin d so i always say while you can while you have the sunshine right now before winter comes take advantage of it go out and exercise go and walk and do your running while there's sun outside that way you're getting some vitamin d um also vitamin d does not cross windows and spfs so uh, even clothing it doesn't so you do kind of want to have a little bit of a bare skin so if you don't want to just walk outside you can sit in your backyard or your balcony and get a little bit of that sun exposure 
uh, how much vitamin D do you need? Um, about 600 IU for most people. Um, again, vitamin D is not naturally found in many foods, uh, but you can get a uh, vitamin D fortified orange juice um, and fortified beverages as well. Um, the best source actually of vitamin D is either liver, you know, beef liver, kaleji, all of that, or fish. Fish is one of the best sources of vitamin D. It's one of the rare foods that actually has vitamin D in it. And then egg yolk. So egg yolk and fish are those unique foods that have vitamin D. Pretty much everything else doesn't. So uh, also a note, a side note for people who aren't eating fish, it is a good mood food. It is a brain food. So if you eat more fish, you get more vitamin D, you get the omega-3s, which are supposed to um, prevent a lot of diseases and they're anti-inflammatory. And they also promote um, brain development and learning. So if you have kids and for yourself as well, getting more fish in your diet will help in brain development and learning. Uh, it'll help, help improve mood, especially if you have you know those mood swings. Uh, it does help with that. Um, prevent also improving your cognition uh, memory um, uh, it also helps support brain and heart and eye f uh, functions all throughout the life so other than dairy products uh, fish is as important um, helps reduce cholesterol and may actually prevent dementia and alzheimer's and there's a lot of research going on on that uh, other things that you also need to make sure that uh, you have a good bone density is getting enough protein, all kinds of proteins um, from both plant and animal sources. Uh, vitamin B12 and vitamin K help in absorption of the calcium and also magnesium. So getting a multivitamin is good. Um, there's actually research that shows that people, women who are above 50, if they have prunes or dried plum, they slow down the breakdown of their bone. So if your parents um, who are above the age of 50 and you know that menopausal stage when they're losing a lot of bone mass having uh, plums or dried plums and prunes can help with that and it also helps with constipation as well so it might be a good thing to add to your diet um, other things like phytoestrogens these are found in soy beans and flax seeds um, and even a lot of fruits and vegetables they also help manage uh, bone density and prevent that and tea polyphenols <laughs> they are mostly found in all kinds of teas especially green tea um, and then malted barley so if you are going to have a soda which i don't encourage but if you did have a soda then you can go for the barbie can you know they, those are the ones that are made out of barley it's malted barley so you can go with that so those are better options rather than getting coke if you had coke you would be losing a lot more bone than if you had something else um, and also controlling sodium uh, foods um, like sodium interfere with calcium absorption so if you have a lot of salt in your food this is going to even if you are going to have your two or three servings of milk it is going to stop that so make sure you're drink having less salt about a teaspoon of salt is recommended in one day so it's it's a challenge but it it is achievable soft drinks like i said and alcohol they also interfere with calcium absorption and caffeine and so few things that are in caffeinated beverages like oxalates and phytates these actually are um they actually stop calcium from being absorbed so uh, although uh, tea is good, it can still um, prevent um, the absorption of calcium. So usually what I say, I've made a video on this on YouTube and I, uh, I'll, I might share it with you. But basically the tea in your milk uh, does benefit in a way that it stops the oxalates and those things that are stopping calcium. Um, from being absorbed it'll block that but because it's blocked and the calcium in the milk in your tea is blocked the calcium is not gonna go and be absorbed in your body so basically the adding milk to your tea will not give you more calcium but it's gonna stop 
the chemicals that are going to stop absorbing calcium. I hope that makes sense. So basically, uh, the milk and tea doesn't count. I usually never count the milk and tea as part of your calcium or dairy intake because um, it doesn't really give you any health benefits. So additional to the milk in your tea, you need more of the dairy products. Okay, so I'm going to conclude. I know I've taken quite a bit of time. In conclusion, uh, foods that you need when you are building a meal plan uh, to help prevent bone loss. Um, try to get more calcium from all sources, whether it's dairy products, dark green vegetables, fish, soy products, or even fortified orange juice. You want to get vitamin D, other vitamins like vitamin K, magnesium, and protein. And you want to include foods like green tea and dried plum and prunes in your diet. Um, and yeah, so I think that basically concludes my sessions. I do have a meal plan that is just designed specifically to prevent bone loss or uh, support bone health. So if you do want to do that, you can always go on my website, uh, modestnutrition.com slash meal plan, and you'll see a bunch of meal plans down there and you can just download, um, sorry, pay and download the ones that you are interested in. Um, other than that, I also, I'm going to take a few questions. I'm just going to scroll through your comments and see if you have any questions. What time is the best time to have sunlight? Okay, so best time for sunlight, I think, would be around like 10, a little before, a little before it's too hot. You know, usually I think it gets really hot around 1, 2, 3 p.m., depending on obviously the time of the year. But I think around early in the morning um, is a good time, like before, before 11 or after, or maybe... Uh, a few hours before sunset so two hours before sunset or three hours before sunset that's a pretty good time where the uv rays aren't too high but it's sufficient enough that you're getting enough sunlight okay so what should women 35 plus do to build more calcium is get they get more calcium sources from uh, foods to prevent um, more bone loss and also make sure that you get the uh, polyphenols and this um, the the nutrients from soy products and dark green vegetables and fish and that should help prevent um, or slow down the breakdown of of bone okay so i'm gonna hang up now and thank you so much for attending uh, i hope you found some benefit um, and we'll have another session hopefully next week same time